hi guys welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new without further ado let's go ahead and get straight into today's video so before we jump right in i do want to say that this set is inspired by kiki nailed it over on instagram and as soon as i saw the set i was like yes i have to recreate this but anyways i do have my peel off base coat applied already so we're just going to go straight into applying the tips and as always, I'm going in with my triple XL nail tips that I use in all of my videos. Everything that I use will be listed down in the description box below, as always. So now I'm just going to go ahead and glue on those tips with some matte top coat. I was actually considering gluing them on with some McCart nail glue that I recently got, but I decided to just play it safe and use some top coat. And after I place the tip on, I just go ahead and cure that for a full 30 seconds. So before I start shaping up these tips, I will just go in with one more layer of matte top coat. I do kind of feel like this just helps to prevent them from popping off while I'm shaping them, but this is not necessary. If you find that it stays on when you're shaping, you don't have to do this step. And now I'm just gonna go in with my cuticle nippers to get rid of that excess nail that's poking out. And I'm following up with my 8080 grit nail file just to make sure everything's nice and seamless. So for today's set, I decided to go a little bit shorter um, than I normally do. You guys know I do my nails super long. For today, I was like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't go too long, especially because there's a lot of gems. So yeah, that is why I'm going this short today. Didn't really mind too much, but it is a little bit different. So it's something I have to get used to, I guess. So now I'm going to go in with my medium sanding band just to fully shape the ends. I think I've mentioned this in my last video, but I feel like when I use a nail file, especially when I'm using the peel off base coat, it's just a little bit rough and it's not as easy to really go in and like shape it as good as you want because the tips aren't as secure as if they were glued on and like your nails were fully prepped. So yeah, I'm just going to go in with my sanding band and just make everything nice and straight. So once our nails are fully prepped, we are finally ready for the application. To start off, I'm going to be going in with some clear acrylic dipped in a little bit of glitter. This method is definitely a little bit tricky because you kind of have to like mix the glitter into the acrylic. So to be honest, instead of doing what I did, I definitely recommend taking a little bit of clear powder and mixing in a good bit of glitter just so that you don't have to worry about mixing it and there being like patches of clear that don't have any glitter. I just feel like that would work a little bit better. Another method that could work is to apply the glitter on top of a layer of like gel polish if that makes sense specifically clear gel polish so basically you would just paint the entire nail and then sprinkle your glitter on top of that now if i were to do that i probably don't think i would have liked how these turned out especially because when you are capping glitter or capping anything really you do end up seeing the layers 
of the acrylic so if you go in with a very thin layer of color and then you cap it with clear you're going to be able to see that separation especially if the color is very thin so with that being said i made sure not to go too thin with this glitter layer I did give it a little bit of thickness i probably could have gone a little bit thinner but i think in the end it looked exactly the way that i wanted it to so definitely choose a method that you think will work best for you this is the one that worked best for me however it was a little bit tricky what i will say is that when you are applying this glitter layer make sure that you are trying to cover every single part of the nail as best as you can because once you start to file and you put on your top coat there's going to be clear spots and unless that's your intention i would definitely say try and avoid that as soon as you can of course a quick fix for this problem could be to apply a layer of glitter on top of the entire application so like once you've moved on to the nail art you could apply a layer of glitter however i feel like it doesn't give the same same dimension as it would if you were to see it in the acrylic but that's just personal opinion if you don't really care too much about that then that is definitely a quick way to fix this issue so for today i don't really have too much to talk about but I do have a small update or I guess it's kind of a big update. I'm not really sure at this point yet, but I did want to mention that I'm currently in the process of monetizing my channel. So um, yeah, that's very exciting. Um, it's exciting to a certain extent. Like I'm still in the beginning um, of like setting everything up and I know it's going to be like a couple month process possibly i'm not exactly sure but i am so very excited because at some point i do kind of want to do this as like my career i don't want to say a job because it doesn't feel like a job but i do want to make this a career because i really enjoy making nail content for you guys and it's just something that i'm really passionate about but yeah i don't know the entire thing kind of just like gives me it gives me like jitters <laughs> if that makes sense like i don't know i've just been kind of like excited for my future like i know i'm still in the beginning stages and i have a very long way to go um but it is definitely a step towards something that i'm definitely looking forward to now i'm not that you know shallow to think that like i'm just gonna wake up and have a million dollars like no like even the fact that like i am a small creator it doesn't bother me as much because i know that like I could it could be worse you know like I could be in a worse situation and I'm just kind of like I feel very grateful and so appreciative of you guys giving me a platform like I I like I don't know I just feel like sometimes I don't know <laughs> sorry if it sounds like I'm just kind of rambling it's because I am like I don't really know what to say I'm kind of just there's a lot of different emotions with this just in general um because i've tried youtube probably about five or six times for different things and i've never seen this much success in anything that i've done i've never really received that much love and support from numerous different people it's just it's definitely a lot to process sometimes and it definitely makes me feel good about myself and i really just want to say thank you all so much for making this possible for me like i owe you guys the world seriously and i do just want to add that like because i am new to this i don't really know what to expect to be honest like i know i kind of have my hopes up for you know this splendid amazing thing <laughs> or whatever but i don't know i feel like maybe i'm self-sabotaging myself because i feel like this whole entire thing could go down the drain tomorrow so like i'm just trying to hold on to all the goodness that i've had in the past like two months and not like make myself feel bad you know like for some reason i have this really bad habit of messing up anything good that's happened to me simply because i just feel like it's not supposed to be happening to me like i don't know it's definitely something that i need to work on because self-sabotage is not great and I can't keep doing this to myself but anyways enough of me rambling about that like 
<laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about that right now but anyway that's what's been going on the past few days if there are any like youtubers on here who may watch this video that I've been on YouTube and have gotten their channel monetized please let me know if there's anything that I need to be aware of I feel like I've kind of searched far and wide for information that I may need to know when it comes to like revenue and ads and stuff like that so if you have any advice, anything that I need to look out for, please, please let me know. I am open to any type of knowledge that I can get at this point. But enough of that and back onto the nails. So I'm still in the process of applying the glitter layer. And what I will say in order to make this method work the best is to kind of treat it like you're marbling. When you first place that bead down, I would suggest kind of swirling and mixing it so that you can get the glitter to be fully saturated with the clear acrylic powder, if that makes sense. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is a bit more important, and I really hope that you guys aren't watching this on mute because I actually have something important to say for once. So for anyone out there who does have TikTok or Twitter or you've seen videos about it on YouTube, then you guys know that TikTok is definitely like under fire right now like there's just a lot going on and i mentioned this in my last video this was definitely something that i wanted to talk about um but i wanted to wait until i had a more like dedicated space to talk about it and if you don't know basically the government is trying to ban tiktok at least ban tiktok's usage in the u.s for u.s citizens um which is definitely a problem to say the least. Me personally, I use TikTok to promote myself, even if it's not often. I do use it to promote my brand. I use it to gain information, especially when it comes to news and things that I need to be aware of, such as the Willow Project, the entire situation with the ICWA and the Native children in America, not to mention every other day, the rights of minorities are being taken away and or threatened to be taken away. And on top of that, it's not even just like super like bad news that I learned. Literally today, I just learned that you can use a bar of Irish spring, rub it on the perimeter of your door and it can prevent bugs and or pests from getting into your house. Like I would have never known that if I didn't have TikTok. And if you have heard about this, that's great. But another thing that a lot of people aren't touching on is the fact that this goes deeper than TikTok. And to be honest, TikTok is really just being used as a ploy to basically blind us from the fact that they are trying to put restrictions on every app that has over a million users and can be connected to the Wi-Fi. That is pretty much every single app that I use on a daily basis. I mean, this goes into banking. It goes into, you know, using different websites to order products, whatever the case may be. It goes into a lot of different things that people just don't really think about. So in fact, it's not really just threatening people who are on TikTok. It's not like, oh, we just want to save our app. They're literally trying to keep tabs on us on every single piece of information that we have access to. And when I say this, I mean allegedly. I don't wanna get sued, please don't sue me. This is alleged. I don't know for sure if they're gonna carry through with this. But to be honest with everything else that's been going on, especially with all of these bills being passed and just the craziness that's been going on, within you know the politics and stuff i will say that it definitely feels like it could happen so what i will do is i will leave a few different petitions and things to look at in the description box i know people don't really look in the description box as much as they used to but i really hope you guys do for the sake of just protecting our rights that we were given um and it's not even to sound like oh i'm an american you know like like literally this is threatening everything that we know and even with me being a young adult i literally just turned 20 in october with me being that young and seeing all of these changes happening it is definitely awoken something in me that i never thought could be awoken like i have been taking a lot of action signing petitions anywhere i can i haven't seen any protests or organized meetings or whatever like that um but i have been signing petitions i even emailed <laughs> I even emailed my um, congressman. So yeah, I have been just like trying to do as much as I can. And I really hope that if you value 
your rights as much as you say you do i really hope that you can make a change as well and to be honest things look pretty rough right now like there's a lot going on right now but i do just want to say that things will get worse before they get better and in order for things to get better we need to stand up and we need to use our voices i feel like we are definitely on the verge of a revolution um not to say we're gonna like pull up with our pitchforks or whatever but i definitely think that our voices will be heard even if that means that we have to make sacrifices that we're not comfortable with but at the end of the day we are doing what we have to do in order to protect ourselves and i think especially if you belong to any sort of minority group me i'm a black woman like that in itself i am definitely a minority and i have definitely been marginalized but if you are belonging to a minority group i definitely think that it is very very important for you to stand up and use your voice because your voice is valuable no matter how much they try and make it seem like it's not your voice has depth your voice has meaning but this guys concludes our very important discussion i'm glad we got it out the way but as you can see we are almost finished capping and we will move straight into shaping and filing So now I'm going to go in with my 80-80 grit nail file as always just to file the undersides and the side walls of the nail. During this step it is very important to make sure that you are not over filing as to prevent a ledge from being created especially underneath the nail. So at this point, I'm going to go in with the same medium sanding band just to seal those cuticles. As you guys know, I normally don't have too much work to do during this step, so I'm going to go in with my sanding band instead of my carbide bit. But as you guys know, I always say to use what works best for you. So if that is a nail file, a, another type of cuticle bit, or even the carbide bit like I sometimes use, then feel free to use those instead.
Next up, I'm gonna take my 8080 grit nail file just to completely smooth out the length of the nail. And because I am using some considerably large gems for today's video, I will be sort of filing the tip a little bit more flat than round. I don't really file my nails like this too often, but I felt like it made sense for this set simply because a lot of those bigger gems don't like to stick, especially since the surface is more curved. So yeah, that's why I'm filing it straight today. And I have to admit that when I was filing these nails, I definitely had to put in a lot more work, specifically because these were a little bit thicker than I wanted them to be. So yeah, my arms were completely done after this, but I think it was definitely worth it because I got the structure exactly the way I wanted them to look. If you guys remember my Swarovski crystal French tip video, that was probably the worst structure I'd ever done. Like they were so thick and just so chunky. And to be honest, if I were to ever recreate any of the sets I've done earlier on, I definitely would recreate that one first because it's probably my least favorite. Along with the black Valentine's Day nails, those are my absolute worst videos that I've done on the channel. <laughs> you know, it's like you learn and like you get better and that's what I love about like documenting everything is I can see exactly where I'm growing and how I'm growing. So in the near future, maybe I'll start a new series of me recreating my older sets. So here I'm just showing you guys how I hold my nail file to give it a nice crisp look and I'm going to go ahead and fix up those tips. So now I'm gonna go in with my coarse carbide bit just to clean up the undersides of the nail. Because these were pretty thick, I did wanna go in with something that was more coarse just so that it didn't take forever. However, with that being said, you wanna make sure not to go too hard, especially because this is an encapsulation of glitter. So if you go too far up, you may end up drilling away some of that glitter. So just be as careful as you can possibly be. And as you guys know, of course, this step is not necessary, but it does help give the illusion of thinner and more crisp nails. And lastly, before we get into nail art, I'm just gonna go ahead and buff these nails really quickly. Because I'm not doing any crazy nail art, I'm just adding some gems. I don't have to go too crazy, but I just like to take this as a precautionary step. Here is what my nails are looking like once my hands are nice and washed, and now we are ready to move on to the nail art. So you guys haven't seen this little set in probably like a month. It's been that long since I've used these and please don't judge me. There's like random gems everywhere all spilled in like each of the little um, sections. But you know, this little kit has seen, it's seen better days. But enough of that, I will be using a combination of these gold gems as well as some silver gems that I just added. Um, in a few different places on all of the nails. I didn't add too many of these because I wanted the focus to be on the gold gems, but I did just add the silver ones as accents. During this part, I did have to go back and refer to my reference photo. And yeah, I definitely had to stop recording like multiple times just to make sure that I was kind of getting a similar vibe with mine. However, after I started getting like really into it, I did kind of just do my own thing and I just had fun with it. Like I didn't want to have it look exactly the way that hers looked. So if you are doing something similar to this, do your own gem placement. It's 
definitely good practice. Gem placement is something that I'm definitely working on. This set definitely allowed me to feel a little bit more confident in my gem placement. But yeah, so anyways, to apply those gems or to, I guess, glue them on, I am just using some base coat. I don't really use rhinestone glue or like bling glue or anything like that, simply because I don't really keep my nails on that long and I don't really feel like I need them to last that long, if that makes sense. But if you are someone who is doing this for longevity, definitely use a rhinestone glue or a sort of like bling gel, something that's going to actually keep these on for a good amount of time. Even with me using base code, I did realize that these are pretty like stuck on there, like they're not coming off. So even if you don't have bling gel or rhinestone glue or anything like that, you can definitely get away with using a base coat or a top coat as long as you make sure that you are using enough. And when you go on with your final layer of top coat, make sure that you're sort of going around those gems to really lock them in. And I would also recommend that when you are doing your gem placement, make sure that you're doing it in sections so that you're not having a whole bunch of rhinestones shifting and moving all over the place, especially if you're not using something that sets on its own. While I was doing my own gem placement, I did make sure to maybe do about a third of the nail or do the largest stones first. And then I cured for about maybe seven to 10 seconds. I didn't keep them in too long because I'm gonna go in with a full cure after I'm done with it anyways so that just helps to save time and it locks everything in but all in all i just want to remind you all to have fun especially if you're doing something like this don't get too caught up in trying to make it perfect because no one's looking all up in your nails and to be honest you are your biggest critic I can say that from experience. I am my biggest critic. I overanalyze a lot because I am a perfectionist, but obviously it's hard to be a perfectionist when you're not where you want to be especially when it comes to how skilled you are like i have a lot of work to go when it comes to nails so me being a perfectionist is definitely very annoying because nothing is perfect to me because i'm still learning right so yeah don't get too caught up just remember to have fun and if you mess up you can always redo it like that's the fun part about nails like you can redo the set you can take it off file it down redo it you can come back to it in like five months and try it again and see how much you've grown and like that's the best part so yeah this is definitely a situation where you have to remember it's just art and it's just nails so relax take a deep breath and just fall into it but finally i will stop talking and let you guys just enjoy the rest of the gem placement
Okay, so after all of the gems are placed, we're just going to finish this off by adding a layer of top coat. And as you can see, I'm going ahead and wrapping those gems in top coat just to make sure that everything stays in place. And before I put my hands underneath the light, I'm just going to wipe down the sides and then I'm going to cure for a full 60 seconds. So you guys know that I normally show you guys what my nails look like under this lighting, but this was just, oh my God, like I love this so much. Like they're just so glittery and reflective and I'm definitely, definitely enjoying them. And to finish off this set, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of cuticle oil. And that concludes today's set. I really hope you guys enjoy this one. I know I kind of talked a lot in this video. I try not to talk too much in my videos because I personally don't like to watch people just rambling on and on and on. But I did have a few things to catch you guys up on. And like I said, I will leave all of the important links and websites, everything you need to know about what's going on with the Restrict Act. All of that will be linked down below. And I really hope you guys can check that out. But anyways, feel free to let me know what you guys think of this set. Would you recreate? it would you not would you wear it for the spring or the summer i'm definitely going to be saving this set for a rainy day that is for certain but as always i want to say thank you guys all so much for tuning in today and i will see you guys in the next one